I'm Bill O'Donnell, and welcome to another program on spirituality. Today in the studio, I'm thrilled to have as my guest Father Frank, Frank Preto of San Ysidro in Agua Fria Village in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and the Saturday Evening Choir. Uh, it's been a thrill for me to be accepted to sing in this choir for the last couple of months, and I'll tell that story later. But first, I want to introduce the guest, Father Frank Preto. It's a pleasure being here once again. <laughs> okay. Donna Lee. How do you do? Okay. Althea. It's a pleasure to be here. And our choir director, Victor. Hi, Bill. Hi, right, good. Okay. Uh, we're doing this song to encourage you folks at home, no matter what church or spiritual group that you're a part of, we want to let you know just how terrific it is to sing with the choir. I'll tell you a quick story. I've been singing in the back row with this church for years, and finally a couple of months ago, during the last song going out, I got trampled by people wanting to leave and not stay. So I went over to Victor and said, can I please sing with you guys? And he said, sure, come on. And it has been a thrill. It means so much more to me to sing in with the mass than to sit in the back and just take it. So I just want to encourage you. Along those lines, I would like to read from you something from the Catholic Catechism, if I can find my glasses here, that tells a little story that I think is important at the Catholic Church's position on singing. This is from 1156, Singing and Music. The musical tradition of the universal church is a treasure of inestimable value, greater even than that of any other art. So all the statues, all the incense, all the paintings, nothing higher than the music. The main reason for this preeminence is that as a combination of sacred music and words, it forms a necessary or integral part of solemn liturgy. Song and music fulfill their function as signs in a manner all the more significant when they are more closely connected with the liturgical action. According to three principal criteria, beauty expressive of prayer, the unanimous participation of the assembly, now repeat that, the unanimous assembly, thank you, participation, and uh, the solemn character of the celebration. In this way, they participate in the purpose of liturgical words and actions, the glory of God and the sanctification of the faithful. Now, I think that is very important stuff. So I wanted to share that with you to start, um, but by way of further introduction, if you don't recognize this particular fellow here, uh, there was a wonderful piece a few years ago by Caloris on PBS that I think will introduce his 
night job. This is him in his day job, but his night job as a famous musician here in New Mexico. So let's roll that tape, give him a little piece of Salsa Sanctus with uh, Father Frank Preto and the Parandas. Some people that come up to me and say, boy, I felt that. I felt that beat. I felt that salsa. I felt that cumbia. I felt it in my feet, in my heart. And, uh, and, they st and, and all they say is, thank you. Thank you. And that's the greatest compliment that I can be paid. Not necessarily the applause, but that thank you for, thank you for, glorious evening that I've had, making me feel uh, that I'm part of this universe through music. We were not created to live in a vacuum. We need to empty, to reveal, to to discuss, to dialogue with other people in order to discover the real me, the real you. I believe that speech and dialogue are the very best way to do this. Now I'm beginning to understand the need and the beauty of it of words that come out of, not of one's brain, but of one's heart, one's soul, and one's gut. So, does that bring back fond memories, Frank? Yes, it does, Bill, <laughs> and uh, it was a, a very well done program, I believe, and it expressed my own feelings about music and worship, as well as music and secular life, but music and worship most importantly, uh, that um, I, I believe a chemical change takes place in the brain when a person sings uh, in, the, in whatever liturgical setting that, the, that they happen to be in, and I do believe that a person who sings prays twice, as the old saying goes. St. Augustine? St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm hoping that this program will encourage people not only to join uh, choirs like our own, but also to sing, always to sing, uh, especially in the kind of world that we live in today. And it's true. I think in most churches, you'll find that the choir directors or music directors will help you. If you're not sure about your voice, just say, hey, I don't know if I can sing or not, and go in and find out and just be a part of it. It's meant so much to me. Anybody else want to add a, a word or two? Nona? Okay. Oh, Althea, did you want to say something? Go ahead. Uh, yes, that I've only been in the choir a short time, maybe eight months, but it's made a big difference in my life. I was led to it. It was serendipity. It's given me the opportunity to realize a lifelong dream of playing music with other people. And you just made me lose my thought. Okay. Well, we'll sing through it then. Mm -hmm. I want to give it puts a discipline into my life that was really needed. What do you want to say in Spanish? Casi lo mismo. Agradezco mucho la oportunidad cantar en español, cantar en inglés, estar un parte del coro de la iglesia 
y también uh, el coro me da una disciplina que es muy importante para mi vida espiritual. Muchas gracias a todos. Okay, thanks. I want to give Victor a chance. He's our choir director. Victor, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this at San Isidro for almost 18 years now, um, but it's something that's kind of been in my family for as long as I can remember. Um, I can remember being even a toddler and uh, sitting with my folks as they participated and or led choirs uh, in various places throughout the country. And uh, even when I was in college and separated from my family and uh, had stopped going to church for a while, there was a a lack of music in, in a local Catholic mission church and I was drawn back to it and performed there, uh, played the organ for a while and and uh, it's just stuck with me ever since. Okay, so if, even if you can't sing, can they come and uh, join the choir? If you can't sing, we'll give you a rhythm instrument. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Let's take it back. So our next song is, what is our next song? Okay, and this is a song that is normally sung during the communion as you're thinking about the body of Christ.
Okay, if you've just joined us, uh, you're watching Spirituality TV. Uh, today we have Father Frank Preto and the Saturday Evening Choir here, giving you a little example of what church music sounds and to give you some sense of how it feels to be someone singing, to have that vibratory harmonic going through you and share with the community really enriches the liturgy. Is, is that your experience, Father? Yes, it's been my experience. And uh, of course, um, having been brought up uh, in a Hebrew tradition, uh, singing was always uh, a very much a part uh, of our services. Um, even in scripture, um, uh, the whole idea of praising God in song is something that the scriptures celebrate constantly. Uh, I'm thinking especially this morning as I was praying my office, my divine office, uh, I came across uh, one of the Psalms of David um, where it said uh, to sing to God with uh, clashing cymbals and, and all kinds of wonderful instruments, which I, I kind of like. You know. In your underwear? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I was fully clothed okay. <laughs> this time. Okay. Uh, but I did have my, my cup of hot cocoa okay. next to me, which always makes uh, praying uh, a delight. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I, I agree with you completely. Okay. Um, so the whole purpose of this is that just wanted to share our joy in sh in singing, and what a difference it's made to me. I mean, I've I've been going to this church almost every Saturday night for close to 17 years, and I would sing in the I would sing in the back row, but nobody else was singing around me, so you kind of hold back. But once I got with the choir, you're fully in, in, enlivened with the song, and you really feel more of the uh, more of the sense of it is that true everyone anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. okay oh, yeah. <laughs> so, much, it's so much better to be able to let go and lose yourself in the music and and have that sense of praying at the same time and it's, it's very cleansing and very uplifting yeah okay what's our next song
tell us about the background of that song. Where did that come from? What's it telling us? Um, it's uh, another one of these uh, wonderful communion songs, which is bilingual. Uh, being that we're living in the United States, in the southwest uh, part of the United States, we have a lot of people who speak Spanish as well as English. So now there are a lot of songs that are coming out in both uh, languages. And of course, there's a lot of migration uh, in other parts of the country, and this helps uh, to bring uh, those uh, migrant people into the into the singing assembly by having songs in English as well as in, as in Spanish. I'd like to add one thing, if I may. You know, Roman Catholics are not known for their singing. Uh, it's it's a it's a well known fact. I this group is exception. Uh, of course, this this group is exception, <laughs> which is why we're here today. But Roman Catholics have a problem with that, uh, as opposed to our Protestant brothers and sisters, who have a long history of of participation as a community in song. I'm hoping that by this program we can change the tide, have a paradigm shift where Roman Catholics will see the value of singing in their respective communities. And of course this applies to anyone who belongs to any, uh, any spiritual group. So sing and see what a difference it makes in your life. Yeah. I just want to add that um, sometimes in some churches the, the priest will leave uh, after the first stanza because he wants to get out to greet you when you come out and welcome you and that sort of thing but he'll wait for you don't leave just because he's leaving don't turn your back on the altar and and miss that last moment you've just received communion you feel that body of Christ within you emanating and pulsating within you and the song at least in my experience just amplifies it it, it certainly does. There's nothing more distressing to a priest than for uh, the, the community to leave almost immediately after communion. It's almost like saying, okay, I've eaten, I'm going to get out of here, and I don't have to say thank you to the host. Well, by staying to the end and, and singing at the end, we not only say thank you to the host, but we give thanks to God for all of the blessings that we have received in life. Yeah. I might just add one more thing. Even after you've sang, then just sit down and meditate quietly and feel that Eucharist, you know, filling your body, filling up your spirit and soul. It's one of the best times to meditate is after you've received the Blessed Sacrament. I, I agree. In fact, uh, the, uh, the Bishop's Commission on the Liturgy re recomm recommends and requests that people spend uh, a minute or two in absolute silence thinking about what they have just done. We have just received God in our bodies. Let's think about it rather than just running out and getting indigestion. Yeah. I'll tell you one quick story, too. I remember I was at church when uh, Father gave the sacrament of the anointing, the healing of the sick, and it was such an amazing thing because I even told us to Victor afterwards, says, you know, th at least twice as many or three times as many stayed and sang afterwards. And uh, so there might be a question there for you. So my advice is take advantage of the sacraments, take advantage of the liturgies, take advantage of the music and sing. And also don't forget the sacrament of reconciliation. Go and clear yourself, clear your conscience, and you know something maybe gunking up in your soul and keeping you from wanting to exulting the, the praise of the Lord. Would you agree? I would agree entirely. But I like the the anecdote that you uh, that you mentioned about the sacrament of the sick. In fact, a week from this coming Saturday, we plan to have uh, one of those uh, uh, services where we anoint the sick. Um, because the gospel happens to, to, to deal with uh, a leper that got healed by the Lord. And what a perfect moment, a teaching moment, not only to say that God heals us, body, mind, spirit, and soul, but uh, to have God come down in that special sacrament to see uh, what kind of healing he would like us to go through. Yeah, so remember that. Give your spiritual life a boost. Go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Clear your conscience. Let go of anything that's holding you back. Go to communion. Receive the body of Christ. And then sing and praise God. You will feel it. I guarantee you will feel it more throughout your entire being. So I think we're running out of time. So please watch the credits. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, tell your friends to watch us next week at the same time as we do our, our closeout song.
TV.